Okay. There you go. Hey everybody, it's June 21st. It's the summer solstice, right? Is that today, I think? So the longest daylight hours of the year. Hooray, my favorite day of the whole year. We're uh, also up on the like north of the equator. Yeah, north. Yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah. Yeah. For me. I'm very selfish though. I'm American. I'm very US centric. Um yeah, no, I am not a fan of cold weather. So now I'll just be dreading the days as All it gets downhill in my winter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what I should do is just go so, just like flip-flop, you know. So I'm always in summer. That would be great. Um anyway, I'll share. By the way, I don't see you leaving Cincinnati. So it is <laughs> I, I really won't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Where is my window? Hold on a minute. I lost I lost everything. Hang on a second. Sorry, everybody. Let me just pull this down. Thanks for your patience. I swear I've done this before. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yay. Yeah, I'm probably not ever going to leave Cincinnati. Sorry to say, but you know, hey, never say never, I guess. Um, let me just open chat so I make sure I see that as well. Okay, so if you haven't answered this, this was literally all I could come up with today. That's where my brain power is. I just, I don't know. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. So I'll put mine in here and it's 11. Now it's 1110. Um, yeah, I just think it's curious to see where people are coming from. Anonymous anteater, love that. Anyway, um, uh, for uh, just a reminder, this uh, meeting is under our code of conduct, so everybody here already knows that, I think, but I'll just say it again. And this meeting here is for our diversity, equity, and inclusion working group. So things we talk about here for anybody who's watching this recording, maybe considering joining, um, we talk about DEI in chaos, we talk about DEI metrics, we talk about badging, events, and project badging. Um, basically, it's kind of like the place where all of those conversations happen. So, um, and just for those who used to come to the badging meeting, we did lump that into this or roll that into this meeting as well. So um, we're going to split this meeting in half ish and we have a general agenda and then we will talk specifically about badging towards the end. So, okay. So yesterday at the um, community meeting, we were talking about this um, uh, idea of tr being better at tracking, surfacing, recognizing, and appreciating these non-code contributions, which so often just kind of get buried in an open source project. Um, chaos is, I mean, these contributions are the bulk of our contributions, I would say, really. I mean, we, obviously we have software here and there are um, contributors to that. Um, and those, those contributions are so much easier to track because you have, we have a GitHub API, um, we have other things uh, to help us with that, but it's so hard to make sure that we are um, just kind of um, recognizing those folks who are working a little bit behind the scenes, things like design, things like events, things like documentation, um, working on metrics even, you know, those don't really show up anywhere except for like maybe on the page where the metric happens. Um, but, you know, is that enough? I don't know. And, and we, you know, Matt has some ideas here and we did have some other ideas um, yesterday, specifically with regard to Slack of having just like um, a way to give people shout outs and just kind of recognize awesome things that individuals have done. Um, we have been doing a chaotic of the week. Um, we're thinking about maybe expanding that or, or um, including teams in that so that, you know, maybe we can include a little more people in those in that recognition. Um, also yesterday we were talking about kind of how those things are separate, um, recognizing and, and making sure people know that we appreciate them is a little bit different than tracking. And I think they're both extremely important because I want to make sure that we, we have enough folks to, to work on events, for instance, is that something we need to, you know, reach out to more people. And I do that manually with things like badging, like I have my list of badgers. Um, but I do that manually, but I, I keep an eye on that and make sure we have enough badgers, um, ooh, which reminds me, I need to add this to the agenda. Sorry, my ADHD brain. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just going to drop that in there. Okay. Um, but, you know, so things like that. So I want to, I do want to track those contributions and who's making those just to make sure we have enough folks for sustainability purposes. 
Um, but I also think that, you know, recognizing and appreciating is super, super important. So I think um, we talked yesterday about maybe starting with that piece, because that seems to be a little bit easier <laughs> to um, surface and recognize those folks. And then maybe think about tracking how, how that might work. Um, but I would love to just kind of hear from this group if, if anybody has any other ideas, maybe if you missed the meeting um, yesterday, or if you had been thinking about it and came up with with some other ideas, I would just want to open it up to this group to see and, and make there may not be any more ideas and that's totally fine. <laughs> that's completely valid. But um, if there are any, I would love to hear them. Um, for non-code contributions, I remember coming across a repository sometime back that had a file on the page where non-code contributions were tracked. So it's like a table-like form and the contributors just write their names, the description of what they did and a link to it. Let's say you wrote an article, you drop the link, or it, you designed a, um, a template, you also drop the link to the Figma file there, but you just drop the link so people can refer to it whenever they want to see your contributions. But it was like a table-like page in a, a table-like format that non-code contributors could just use that to create pull requests for their contributions and other persons can come and check it on there too. I'm really glad that you said that because I I remember that also. And then I thought, did I dream that? Like, did I just make that up in my head? <laughs> so I'm really glad that you remember it too, Anita. Um, I, I do like that idea. I think it's a good, you know, kind of low hanging fruit to start tracking. Um, I do have a couple of concerns with it just from a human standpoint that it feels kind of weird sometimes for people to self recognize or you know what I mean like they might be hesitant to add things in there um, and also I, I I was a little bit afraid that if we do have it if, if we do aggregate any kind of stats or anything like that those are all going to just seem like not like code contributions because they're all just going to get rolled into all the rest of the PRs so those are my only concerns with that but I I mean I think as far as like a starting point I think that might be a, a good way to at least start you know <laughs> at least at least start and and take that kind of idea and maybe spread it out a little to other parts of the other parts of the um the project because that was mostly a chaos Africa thing is that right Anita I think Ruth maybe started that um currently there's no page like that for chaos Africa oh that I know of. Okay. Do you know who initiated that? Was it Ruth? So um I actually saw this in um Eddie Eddie God's um page. So it was from his community that I got that particular idea, but okay. I can't remember the repository, so I can provide a link to it. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I think, well, maybe Ruth and I had just talked about doing that. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while, but, you know, maybe there is a way that we can, can leverage that, that method, um, keeping in mind some of the maybe caveats that come with it. But, um, yeah, I, I like that idea. I'm just going to put on there tracking idea. Any other ideas that folks have? And again, if not, that's completely fine. So I had, based on yesterday, I had an idea. Can you stop your share for a second? So it was just something like super simple where we just ask, like we just have like kind of a series of tabs where we, this is for tracking because it felt like yesterday you were talking about tracking with the intention of helping the particular areas of chaos. 
like not tracking to recognize people. I don't know if I'm getting that right, but it felt like some of the conversation was like tracking so that we understand where there are potential problems in the project or tracking so that we can like provide additional support where needed. Yeah, I think it would be both, but um, I mostly was, if, if we could figure out a way to track the data and be able to put it in like a dashboard or something like that, but that would be the reason would be just what you have here is to make sure that we have enough folks in the right places and that we can point folks to places if they're looking for somewhere to go and they have that skill set. I guess what I was trying to do here was not, this isn't about recognizing people. It was about just kind of asking people to reflect a little bit on like common, do we have enough participants? Um, are new people coming? Just like these really simple, basic questions. And maybe this, the spreadsheet was like made in like one second, <laughs> but like, just really simple ways for us to track how we think things are going in the different parts of the project. So like we could have, you know, like software, you know what I mean? Logger. And then maybe just ask like those um, kind of team leaders Exactly. Uh, maintainers just to like reflect every periodically, every quarter or something like that. Yeah. And then after just, some, yeah. Yeah. Or after some event, whenever it might be. And we just put this on the agenda. Like this comment, do you think you have enough participants? Like every, yeah, like every six months or something like that. And we just were like, no, <laughs> the two people that show up every day. And it's just something that, or the two people that show up for the meeting, it's just something that we could take a look at um kind of as some of the maintainers of the project or I don't know I, I don't quite know how this would work but I'm just I was trying to keep it really simple and just having people provide their own insight irrespective of what the data tells us like if I'd hate for I don't know irrespective of what the data tells us it's more of just like a feeling of how people sense that things went but maybe this is silly I don't think it's silly at all. I think it's a good idea. And I think maybe we could just experiment with it and give it a try. You know, I'm all about experimenting with stuff. So um, if we wanted to, we certainly could could set that up, you know? So like, I guess for the folks that were, like, if we just did like a simple question here, like for the folks that were on the organizing team for Chaos Con, do you think you had enough organizers? Were there enough people, you know, that, that list of people? I think there were maybe eight to 10 people on that list. Was that enough? Was that too many? Were any of you organizers? <laughs> I think some of you were. Mary Blessing, what do you think? Did you think you had enough folks to help plan that event? Or would it have been helpful to have more? Oh, was that the question? I actually didn't have a question. Oh, you're fine. Connection. No, you're fine. We were just asking oh, okay. if you think we had enough or you had enough folks on the planning team for Chaos Con Africa to like make it um, kind of easy on everybody or was it, um, did you need more? Did you have too many that people didn't have anything to do? We, we're just curious. Oh, yeah, I think we have a um, right number of people. So to help with the with the planning. Um, we even had like more volunteers coming. So so I, I wouldn't say it was too much. Um, we just had the right people, you know, coming to organize. But, but we sure did have a few persons that were inactive. Well, I mean, we totally understand, you know, um, they could have work and all that, so, yeah. So, so that's like, that's an interesting answer. And so like, if I was to answer that with say some of the chaos cons that we've done in the like chaos con North America, I would honestly answer no, sometimes that we haven't had enough people. We've had people listed on the organizing list, but I don't know that we've all necessarily participated in the same way. So like, I, like, like, I don't know how data would tell us that would be my problem that there's something underneath that that needs to be brought forward. 
Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, but like to the other end on like chaos kinds, like, are they stressful for me? Like, no, because typically like day of, like, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. Everybody just pulls together and works as a team and it's absolutely amazing. So like, is the event stressful itself? Not particularly, you know, so I feel like we're good on, on day of type of work so maybe that question would be instead of like is it stressful but like how did it run day of you know what i mean like the planning part and the day of part how about you mary blessing was was chaos con africa stressful during the day it was happening um okay i used to think about the events day is that what you're asking for yeah just the day the, so like there's all the work that goes into planning you know what I mean? Like all the, the stuff that happens like weeks before the actual day of the event. And, okay. and then there's the day of the event, <laughs> like the actual day. The, I think it was the 14th of, of June yeah. is when it happened. Was that day stressful for you? Um, at, at all. At all. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, pretty much everything we, we needed for, for the event, right? It was already like, we already in set, so we have been coming as planned. Um, I mean, speaker did be like on us, well, we recorded in six like a day before, which wasn't cool, but I mean, we, we had we had the way to like improvise. So, um, so I think, it wasn't it wasn't stressful really. I mean obviously posting events was not is not super easy, but, <laughs> but in in general it's it was really fun. Um I wouldn't say it was it was super stressful. I, I think I think the the fun the fun in it like supersede the, the stress. So <laughs> <It's just> even... <laughs> that makes sense. That yeah. totally makes sense. Um so I so this is all okay. So I mean that's helpful. Again, that's super helpful. So like to me, if I was to to at least well, okay. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit, Mary Blessing. I didn't hear you real well. Yeah, I was just going to say that on that day, not everyone like would have a lot of work to do. I think bulk of work was majorly on say the the host then you know um the host then the social media team because they had to be on standby to like let the online online uh, attendees understand what's going on at each point of the, of the event so um every other person had put in the work to run the event but on that particular day they were like a lot of roles that were like dormant, like other people were not doing a lot of stuff, we just paying attention to the main event. So we had a few persons, you know, had to be, yeah, and we had rules almost like everywhere because uh, she had to like, coordinate things. Um, then we had the host, you know, having to do more of the work, bringing up um, speakers and making sure everybody's just having fun. Um, then also we had the social media team on standby. Um, then we have the volunteers, those the ushers, and also those helping with registration. So those are like the few few teams that were on standby on that day that, that had a lot of work to do on that day. But every other team had done the app, so they were pretty much just chilling. Okay. Love it. I, I totally agree with you that like the fun can outweigh the stress, you know. <laughs> of course there's cool. stress in the day, but the fun is usually over. It's more, it's better. <laughs> yeah. So I, this was just, I was just gonna, this is just my, these are my thoughts. I'm just trying to keep this really, s as we as we recognize people and we track, which I do think are kind of different things, um, that we can do it in maybe very simple ways and just, like open communication ways. I just, ironically in the chaos project, I struggle with with data to help us do this sometimes. <laughs> I do too. And I get asked a lot, like as a community manager for the metrics, like what metrics do you track? And I'm like, I don't really track anything. Like, I mean, like we track, you know, 
things like who come like how many people are coming to meetings and you know like how many people are on slack but i mean really i don't track a ton so well, and the yeah, things that i'd like to get to are they're kind of like sometimes our dei metrics they're mm -hmm. they're they're things that we want to track i want to understand our like maybe in this example like are our events being well planned in in that the burden is being shared by a lot of people in that planning and the day of is actually going well and it's fun you know to to Mary blessings point and like i just don't think we can track data like that and the things that we're trying to get at are are more of those dei related metrics and so i hesitate when we are trying to do things with people that that we that we lean towards data because a lot of the any, I don't know, I can go on. But a lot of our DEI metrics are not based on trace data. They just are not. Yeah. So I think it's okay for us to not do that as well because we recommend other people don't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with things like this and, um, you know, just making sure that people feel appreciated is, is really important to me too. I, get, I mean, people are mostly volunteers here and they could literally be doing anything else with their day, yeah. sleeping or eating or like anything else. And they chose to come here and work with us at Chaos. And so, you know, it's super important that I want to make sure they feel like this is a, a worthwhile effort <laughs> for them to come and, and be a part of. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I like your idea, Matt, and I think we should just try it. Like, why not? Why we have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So um, do we want to maybe start spreading the word to working groups that we would like that let me, let me try to work on that spreadsheet a okay. little bit i could just think of maybe if like two or three questions that we could ask yeah it's, it's like a much it's like our like our example yeah. question to say in a metric you know just what what could we ask and maybe i go maybe i look at some of our own metrics like mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the burnout metric that mm -hmm. Chris had put together a long time ago, and I, I just use some of those questions, and we we start just kind of asking our working groups and our event organizing teams and something like that. Yeah. So the spreadsheet is only like it's only like three or four questions. It's just really simple to ask people. We could also like plop them in a Google form too, if that's easier. yeah. Yep, exactly. Yes, so, exactly. Because then yeah. we can get the data out of a form as well. And it actually, it'd probably be better to put into a Google form and just ask working groups to run it once every six months or something like that. Yeah. And you and I just set up a calendar reminder that encourages working groups to ask these questions. I don't know. We could think of the logistics, but there's something simple. Yeah, I'm going to put this in our agenda here. Um, If anybody here would like to help me think through what those questions could be that we might want to ask people, um, no problem. I'm happy to talk to you. I also think I got me some suggestion, but I'll probably will look through the minutes notes. Sure. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again, if that's cool. So I gave you an action item here, Matt, if that's cool. Yep, oh, that's okay. good. Word up. Thanks everyone for that. And if you um, think of anything else and you wanna talk about it asynchronously in the Slack DEI channel, that would also be great. So don't hesitate to just plop something in there if you have some comments or something. Um, I wanted to just let everybody know we do have um, a, some onboarding work in progress. We are taking so um, for those who remember we used to do once a month we used to do a weekly or weekly yeah a monthly um, onboarding call with uh, whoever newcomer wanted to join and it was a an hour long presentation with um, myself and Ruth. And it was just a lot of information that we just kind of threw at people <laughs> in an hour, just an hour of us talking to people. So we got some feedback that it might be better broken into smaller chunks that people could kind of go through when they have time and, and you know, it's a little less just fire hose of information. So we're creating um, a chaos course 
for newcomers where we're going to basically take that presentation and break it down into like five minute videos and and link it to the docs if we have docs that also kind of co correspond with that. Um, and it'll be in kind of like a, like a school setting or like a university setting where you have your list of court of modules that you can go through and it's like um, you know it'll keep track of what you've seen what you haven't and um, should just be a little bit easier for people to kind of understand how much they know how much they still have to learn and they can just kind of do it at their own pace so uh, we're working on that where we just started building out kind of what would be in each of those modules and videos and so um, if, if anyone here is interested in working on that um, would love that help especially with regard to creating videos or um, writing a script for a video really anything um, or just giving feedback on yeah these are the right modules there's stuff missing you know whatever so um yeah we would love that so just let me know i did look at so the this is i think the a sheet you had shared with me yesterday was this correct yeah and so i had also recommended that we start putting together a course just for open source in general as well i did that on the second page and we yeah, had okay. that um i did look at moodle okay as a hosting platform and it's I think it's like $110 a year so we can easily pay for that oh I thought it was free okay All right. but well it's it's free if you host it oh I don't want to host it no so, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that yeah then we have to get a server anyway and install it on like a cloud server and Otherwise, if we pay, I think $110, here I can share it in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, Max, is this for hosting the videos on there? How about YouTube? It doesn't work. This is about um, putting together, so we wanted to put together a class or two that people could take that would have like a series of learning modules that they could go through. Um, Elizabeth, do you have that? Uh, maybe. Oh, Ijeoma, I would love that. Yes. I would love that. Yes. Agreed. Okay. I'm going to have to stop sharing if I'm going to go searching the bowels of my computer for that doc. It'll take a second, though, I think, because I think it's a, it would okay. help explain it a little bit. Yeah, let me just find that here really quick. Um, I'll, I'll bring up an example here as well, Mary Blessing. Yeah, uh, where did it go? I closed all my stuff. Okay, hold on. So Mary Blessing, this is this is my university, but this is like Canvas, which would be similar to Moodle. Yes. And so we would set up like week week one or whatever, course one would be an introduction to chaos and it would have a couple different videos in there and then only after they watched those videos for example we could do course two which would be like chaos product chaos working groups or something like that and it would have a couple of videos that would describe say the chaos working groups and only after they take that course could a person move on to the next course and so we just need to have uh, a tool that could help us kind of um, regulate how people go through the course in the videos that they see. So these videos could be on YouTube, that's fine, but we just, the learning management system just kind of helps keep things locked or unlocked for people as they take a course. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yes. And so this what I, what you're seeing here is it's can it's called Canvas and it's it's a, it's not open source and it's expensive. Are you, are you sharing your screen because it's not showing anything? It stopped. Oh, okay. I, I was sharing my screen. Did you not see it? Oh, it was showing the meeting notes. If that was what you were sharing. This. Yeah. This is this is a class. Do you see this? No, it's showing the meeting notes. Really? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's what he's been showing. You I see your screen, Matt. That's weird. Okay. What does anybody else see? Do you see? This is the meeting notes here. 
oh, it's showing the meeting node over here. Like, that's what you're displaying. And right now I'm showing the class. Nah, that, that's not showing. Uh, well. <laughs> So I was like, yeah. something's it's happening. Fine. I don't know what's going on. Does anybody else, does anybody else see this, the, I, the class screen? I see the class. Okay. Mary Blessing, it sounds like maybe something is weird for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I found that doc. Okay, so you share it. So the okay. point was being, for those that you can imagine, Mary Blessing, that there is a screen <laughs> that shows classes. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, then, I'm familiar with LMS, like learning management system. So I okay, guess so you. yeah, so Canvas is just one of them, and it's too expensive, and it's not open source. And so yeah. we want to use Moodle, I think, and we would just set up a series of classes like this. This is just an example of the courses, or the what we would call modules, I guess. So these are you know. 10 to 12 modules and only after a person watches the first module would they be able to move on to the second module at least that's the thought like it's a course you take a course you you do one by one you know it's what i mean class. yeah that's a learning yeah. and yeah. i think it's also helpful to um keep everything in one place for people so if they ever want to go back and re reference you know, if they aren't sure about something, they want to go back and reference that video. It's like all right here. It's all in your learning path. It's like your own journey. Mm -hmm. Chaos, which I really kind of like that. And then if you scroll down, I'm also suggesting another class that would be on just open source in general. Because I think there are a number of people who are are kind of participating in the chaos project or have an interest, but are also new, not just to chaos, but new to open source. Mm -hmm. And it would probably be helpful to have a course that is, you know, just uh, like, why does it matter? Oh, hold on. Yeah, I know. Yes. Did you remember? Oh, sorry about that, it is best. Oh, uh, go ahead. I want to like, sure. I always like let Matt know that. I don't know if she remembers, but we're supposed to like, like chaos Africa was supposed to like take off that take up that part of, you know, helping people out in open source generally. So I'm not sure if that's still valid or are we just going to, I mean, we did just one series, like one series so far. So I don't know, it's just been a lot planning the chaos con. So maybe we could take up from there or you want this to rather replace that. No, I think that that's totally still the plan. Like, I think Chaos Africa is, is working on that a lot, for sure. And I'm guessing Matt just had some thoughts about what might be included. Because I know Ruth has also been working on this, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have been. Do you think, um, here's a question for you. Do you think the work that Chaos Africa is putting together for newcomers to open source is specific to the needs of of African contributors, Africans. yeah, or would it be like, would there be two? I don't know. Um, that, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, we could, um, we could have it in a way that it's, 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 it's um, relevant to everybody and not just Africans really like that, that's what I think. Oh, but yeah, it's a good question because so far we've just been thinking specifically for the African needs. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> mm. That's a good feedback. Mm. But I think that's something we can certainly work on and, and talk about. Like we don't have to, we don't have to figure that out today. <laughs> um, but that's good to know. That's good to know, and that's definitely something. I, let me just kind of put that in here. Um, can, uh, I mean, maybe we end up doing one for all different regions. Because we are going to be, you know, kind of ramping up 
regional activities in Latin America and the Balkans. And so maybe, yeah. Yep. Um, I, sorry, I had to step away for just a second. Um, I, I would say too, in terms of, could you go back to that sheet? Sure. Back to this? Yeah. And maybe scroll up a little bit, like to the, so right now, like Elizabeth, you can all see that Elizabeth has herself like down as kind of narrating the video. I think we could probably do this also collectively as a community. And so like we could write, we would probably want to write a script for each one of these anyway, like in terms of the the words that would be said for this five five minute overview and kind of the screen, you know, we could create a slide deck, which would probably be easier than going back and forth between mm -hmm. um, like tabs on a on a browser. And you know, if we write a script and have a slide deck created, the hope is is that we can have a whole bunch of different people maybe deliver these as well. You know what I mean? So like, if you one way that another way to participate is not just helping write the script in the slide deck but even just narrating the script through the slide deck would be really helpful just as i think people going through the classes would really benefit by seeing a bunch of different folks <laughs> kind of talking about chaos not just always elizabeth or always me or something like that i think it would be really helpful just in terms of connecting with, since sometimes people you know, you know, you're like, oh, I know that person, I hang out with them, and they're doing a course. It'd just be really great. So I, it, the hope is, is that if you want to do a course, you don't have to like write the whole script and do the whole slide deck and record it like all by yourself. Like we would do this all together. Yeah. Maybe we could have people showing trash for this. Um... Um, specific part of the or module of the course they want to like um, contribute to or assist them yep. if that makes sense it does yeah. make sense i like that better than me doing everything <laughs> like i i love i like i want to include more people i i'm always hesitant to um like give more work to people but also i would love i would love <laughs> I would love if people want to help out with this. And I think that's a fantastic idea, Matt, is to definitely include as many folks as we can for this. So it sounds like in the chat we had a number of people love the idea. I'm gonna yeah. assume that means you're interested in doing it. I'll read it that way. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been assigned. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. And you know, yeah, like Matt said, like we we could maybe have um, like for the software part, like maybe we could have Sean and Daniel or Sean and somebody from Grimoire Lab help write the script out, so it wouldn't, you know, like you said, wouldn't necessarily have to be an expert on everything to help with these. So, yeah, love well, I that. think with the script, you almost don't have to be an expert at all. Sometimes you can just read the script if it's yeah. a well written script, and you're just delivering the content. So, yeah. awesome. Oh, I love that. Okay, so um, so everybody has this access to this, right? Do we uh, want to just work on it async? Or what do you all think? It'd probably be good if people have feedback on it. I took a look at it yesterday. If anybody here on the call has feedback on the course, that would be cool. or a volunteer for any of the modules. <laughs> I'll just put it right there. And maybe if there's a better way to um, coordinate everything, like in a spreadsheet or on an issue in GitHub, like however, whatever people think would be the easiest way to coordinate this, I'm down. I'm super down for whatever. Probably, I think the document that you just shared. This one? Mm -hmm. Like we could just like, so you have like what's in there, like on number one, but like it could be like one C, I could just do it, I guess. Well, I don't have it up in front of me, but like one C could be like link to script. Yeah, maybe so a under, table. Under newcomer, un, un, well, just under newcomer resources. Okay. After B, just hit yeah. enter, and then just say link to script. And then like C, yep, hit enter. Okay. 
and then it would be linked to slide deck. Oops. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Have my fingers off a little bit. Good right? okay. And we just linked yeah. to the, the one of these. And yeah. Then, we can have one D, which would be linked to slide deck or something like that. And we could Gosh, just. Yeah. Add that. And then um, I'm going to just take my name off the here. Take my name. I'll leave mine for the intro. That's fine. But yeah. I'll just do that. I can do this one too. I don't mind doing that. Yeah, and I'm thinking like a pretty like we could just create a folder in in the chaos drive that's like called chaos classes or something like that. Yeah. And we just have one that's like about chaos and one that's about open source. And then that's where we can store all of the scripts and all of the Love it's a little it. bit of tedious work, but you know what I mean. And then yeah, no, I love that. Create whatever ten documents, and then just get those links updated in that main page. Well, um, do you know? Do you know if Moodle will link, just like import or link, embed whatever from? I've never drive? used Moodle. Okay, yeah. I don't. I don't remember. It's been years and years and years since I looked at it. So, yeah, I'll look at it again. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Oh, we're out of time. Okay. okay. Well, you can read the other updates <laughs> or we can talk about them next time. That's totally fine too. Um, oh, what a good meeting. Thanks everybody. I'm so excited. I love that. I feel like we've made progress and we're so, produ so productive today. So, well, have a good rest of your day, everybody. And we will see you here same time next week. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.